Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I hope you all had a really wonderful Thanksgiving. We are filming this video the day before Thanksgiving and we've got a lot to do today. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so we're hosting tomorrow because my parents' kitchen is gone. <laughs> So they ended up, you know, we did a tour of their house recently showing you the renovation and they uh, did it in a way that the lower cabinets and the stove and the dishwasher sink, all of that could stay put. And they built like this box around it to protect them. And then they discovered that the floor in that part of the kitchen sat just a bit higher yeah. than the rest of the floor. In the entire... Was it like an inch uh, I don't higher know. or half an inch higher? I'm not sure that I ever knew how high it was, but it was kind of a blessing in disguise because they ended up taking everything out, took the floor out, and they found that that... 220 that was run to the stove the guy that installed it it was spliced and they like had run something else off of it oh wow which i i think is a fire waiting to happen so there was actually been two things that have happened in the renovation to where they were thankful in the end that they, it took longer sure. because they found a, a random leak that they didn't know was there and they found that wire issue so anyway all that said they don't have a kitchen so everyone's going to be at our house so i've got pies Two pies to make. I'm making some bread today uh, and then getting everything like prepped. I've got my list. <laughs> so, anyway. Are you stressed about it? I'm not too stressed. I just, you know, my mom's going to be here and my sister's going to come a couple hours early. And it's just family. It's just like the, our immediate, my immediate side of the family and my grandparents. So, I mean, it's not like it's high pressure or mm -hmm. anything. But I did go get some flowers yesterday and they're in the root cellar. So I'll probably film a little something when I make the centerpiece and it'll come out next week off schedule, but who cares? <laughs> so also before we jump into the videos, Proven Winners is running a sale on Monday that I wanted to let you know about. It's the original ceramic aqua pots. I guess they're the lowest price they have ever been. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only going to be for one day. I don't know what the price is going to be, but we'll link down below where you can go check them out. Um, and the aqua pots are the ones with that aqua pot insert in, you know, inside the water reservoir. So they're like a self-watering self -watering pot. Yeah. Um, they're also throwing in some fertilizer with it. So anyway, check it out. Thought you guys might like to know. Also, we do have gift cards available on our website, gardenanswer.com uh, now. I don't know how long they've been available, yeah. but I was just told about it this morning. So we do have gift cards to our website. So let's jump into the videos from this past week. First one was three new house plants for the house and starting geranium and lisianthus seeds. So the day before I filmed this video, we were down at Andrews on a Sunday. They were mm -hmm. closed and we just, we brought in lunch and just enjoyed the store. And I picked out three new leaf joy house plants and they're so pretty makes me feel motivated to put more in the house yeah. and I do believe we have more leaf joy house plants on their way so that'll be fun we'll get some new stuff in the in the house and then I started some maverick white geranium seeds which are looking beautiful they actually are, are pushing their first true leaf right now and I know this is like crazy early to start seeds but I wanted the white geraniums to possibly in be close to a bloom stage to use in some indoor spring kind of arrangements and then I had some pelleted lisianthus seed, which I kind of figured it's like now or never. Pelleted seed, you don't want to hold on to for more than a year. They say that the shelf life goes way down. So I don't even know what to expect in terms of germination. Uh, but I figured, you know, if we started these early, maybe I can get them, if they germinate, maybe I can get them to a better size than the, when I start them later on in January. I'm gonna order some fresh seeds though, and I'll start them on the normal schedule, but I just wanted to run that experiment. No germination yet, but it's been, like less than a week yeah. since I start, maybe about a week and the geraniums are just like rocking. Um, the packet, seed packets of 10 seeds, it came with 11 and 10 of them came up. So I got exactly what I paid for, which is awesome. Okay, Cindy said, love the indoor plants mixed with the Christmas decorations. What is the vase you put the fern in and what is the name of the fern? That is a living lace Davana fern. It's really interesting, it's kind of a very slender, stem with no leaf on it and then the leaf starts a little bit later and it's just like this real blousey looking plant and I put it down in a terrarium. It's a terrarium I've had probably since our first apartment. I've had it for a long time. It's just like a simple iron and it's got glass windows on it. Paula said, love your videos. Thank you. I've learned so much. Question, how do you clean your trays? So I just put them in a sink full of hot soapy water with a little splash of bleach. And then I scrubbed them out, not like, I didn't do elbow grease, I just scrubbed them out a bit, rinsed them out, off, and then brought them out and used them. I usually don't even clean my tray, so <laughs> I was feeling pretty good about that. Um, and Madeline said, random question, how do you handle going in and out of the house with shoes and frequent gardening? So I've never been, I know it triggers some of you guys, I've never been super up 
not, it's not being uptight, fussy. I've never been super fussy about uh, shoes in the house because I'm not one who wants to take mine off. In fact, if I have to take mine off, if I'm not in my own home, like if I go somewhere else, I know it's, like I will to be respectful, but I don't like it. <laughs> I do not like it one bit. So I don't make people do it at our house. However, we do have um, like booties. They're like, what are they? Like little, Just little uh, blue booties. Blue booties. That if we've been doing something particularly dirty outside, we'll pop those on. So sometimes I'll walk around in the house with those on so I don't have to take my shoes off. And then it protects any like mud and stuff. It is, it's interesting how, um, I mean, there's some personalities like ours where it, it's not really a thought. You know, wearing no. shoes in the house, we don't think about it. But to the people who take their shoes off, they think about it a lot. <laughs> well, yeah. And it is, I mean, hold on. I'm just, I'm buttoning my vest because I keep hitting the buttons. Oh. And it keeps making noise. Um, I, it is, I, like, I recognize that you're dragging stuff into your house. I do. Yeah. So, like, if you really think about it, probably pretty gross. But we don't, like, waller around on the ground, though. So... Well, we have with kids for the last little bit. <laughs> How, but, you know, I was sick a couple of weeks ago, and that's the first time I've been sick in, like, 10 years. Yeah. So, got some pretty good immune systems rocking. Our kids have really good immune systems. Well, it's the first time you've been... I mean, you've had, like, colds here and there, but they never last for more than, like, 24 hours. Right. And they don't... They never they bring don't you down. They don't affect me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just kind of go on with your life. Yeah. Mostly because your life is just like, I can just go outside and work anyway. Yeah. It's like you're not around Let's people. Let's sweat it out. Yeah. <laughs> sort of a situation. That's nice when you can just, you're not, you don't have like an office situation right. where you're worried about getting other people sick. Right. I did cancel actually two appointments. I actually had scheduled myself in a, a massage. Um, I thought I'm going to treat yourself. <laughs> and I had to cancel that because I thought she doesn't want to be working close to me when I'm, I've got, you know, this thing going on. That was a bummer. <laughs> Small holding at Hill High said, is there a shelf life for natural? It's pri it is pricey. Oh, it's pricey, and I don't think I need a 16-pound pail. I did find where you could buy like a half pound, um, and it was way better price-wise, clearly. Um, but also, um, I looked at the tub. I looked everywhere on the tub. I read the entire label, and it's like there's lots of words on it. And I never found an expiration date or a shelf life date. It just says to keep uh, uh, cool and dry. So I'm thinking... It will last and it stretches really far. So unless you're doing a ton of stuff, a half pound will last you quite a long time. I just, I pulled the trigger on the big one because it's what we do. You know, I mm. figured I'm gonna need this for fungus gnats probably for the rest of my gardening days and I'll just use off of that pail and it can live here in the studio. Uh, Lisa said, how fun to be starting new seeds. Question, is the vermiculite dampened on the seeds that you planted? It was not dampened uh, when I put it on, it's just dry and then I mist it all in and it gets, moistened that way. Bex Crafty Creation says, what's the difference between the houseplants in the house versus those in the studio? Do those in the studio have a different purpose? You know, it's weird. I don't really know. I think about that. Mm -hmm. Like, I could move some of these inside and maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. I think what happened is I had so many houseplants at one time that when we had, do you remember when we had all this set up in one of our bedrooms upstairs? So we had this all all up there and I just like we would be scent plants or whatever the case was I needed a spot for them in bright light so we just put them underneath grow lights and it kind of started with succulents and cacti first um, and I do have a lot of those still sitting here uh, because I didn't have another place in my house that had bright enough light to keep them happy so when we moved everything out to the studio just naturally everything that was in the room just moved out here and I, I don't know it's kind of like part of the room yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. There's not a whole lot of like re, uh, rhyme to the reason. How do you R say that? There's no. There's no rhyme or reason. The rhyme or reason. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> For uh, some of the <laughs> some of the decisions that we make around here, you know, like uh, when you're in your own space, sometimes you kind of have blinders to mm -hmm. like why you do a certain thing oh, a yeah. certain way, mm -hmm. and you sort of need somebody else to be like, why do you do that? And you're like, I have no idea. Just been doing it this way. Yeah. And sometimes when you make the change, you're like. Yeah, why, why didn't, didn't I do I even, that sooner? Yeah, or why didn't I even think about it? Yeah. Like, this is way better. Right. <laughs> Justine said, do you have an overall update on how your overwintered dahlias you left in the ground did? So we had about 60% or so return. Uh, and, you know, we, in order to keep them in the ground, we mulched them up with the straw. Well, we did a silage tarp and then straw and leaves. And in doing so, we, I think, and there's no proof to this, but I think that's how we got our huge thrip population. They overwintered in that all that debris 
and then we just had this massive explosion of thrips this year. Um, so overall, I would, I would probably not recommend. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody has a different experience with that, and it depends on the scale that you're doing it. Uh, you do need to divide every couple of years at least because, you know, they'll start getting too big and they'll start, you know, it's, I don't know. Performance-wise, they did just as well as the ones I planted. So um, labor-wise, to dig them up, I think we're, we would be better off buying new ones every year, mm -hmm. for sure. But again, it's a scale thing, and we're scaling way down on the dahlias just because of all the effort. It's just not worth it. I like dahlias fine, um, but are they worth <laughs> that amount of effort? Maybe four rows worth. Mm -hmm. We might even scale down to three after that. I don't know. Um, and that way we can kind of, uh, maybe we can let people come in and dig what we planted that year if they want to have them. That way they do the labor, they get free tubers from it. We don't have to store them. And then we get to try new varieties every mm -hmm. year. It might be a win-win in that situation. Sure. Yeah. Um, Audrey said, my house doesn't have a ton of light. Are there any house plants you recommend for lower light conditions that face west? Um, ZZ plants are awesome. Sansevierias are awesome. Uh, Spathophyllums, peace lilies are great. Um, there's quite a few. I was looking through the LeafJoy um, catalog? catalog, and there's quite a lot of them that, and I can't recall. All, you might check them out. On, well, maybe we can link that page on their website mm -hmm. um, because it lists all of them. And then you could find something that you like that might fit your light conditions. Ashley said, I need that knife in my life. Is that from Felco too? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, it's a great one. It's got like a little curve on the end. And I used it a lot yesterday when I was tearing apart that water lily. Do we sell thing. that in the store? I don't know. I don't think we have it in the store. Need oh. to get it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Uh, okay, next video is planting lots of daffodils and tulips in the cut flower garden in an experimental way, which I've actually had two friends text me after we did that, and they said, this will totally work for you. People in, you know, they've just shared their experience of friends that they knew that had done, or uh, one was an extension, like a like a college program, uh -huh. had done it, and it worked really well. So fingers crossed that it does. But what we ended up doing is I created a little furrow with my hoe, then we went along and set the bulbs in, and we put them rough, roughly two to three inches apart from one another, which I think we could have gone even closer mm -hmm. if we really wanted to. Um, and then I just used a little bit of that soil that came out of the furrow just to kind of tamp them in so they stayed upright, and then we just covered them with compost, like good five, six inches of compost out there. <laughs> and, you know, it seems it wasn't... I don't know, it would have been more work to dig the trenches, for sure, Yeah, for sure. Um, it was, still was a lot of work because it was a lot of moving compost, but we're gonna add that compost to the garden anyway, eventually, we add it yeah. every new crop we do, we add new compost. So it felt like, well, this is all good for the soil, it's fine, this is where all the compost that we got is gonna end up anyway, so let's just go with it. Sure. Spin Knit said, do you ever ask people to use the Telegram app to speak to you? If not, I think I was scammed. God. I know. Yes, you were sc scammed. That's like a super common yeah. thing. Don't reply to Telegram stuff. <laughs> yeah, you should. Uh, here's the thing is you should just always be suspect. You know, whenever somebody, um, if you don't feel like you're super savvy with computers, you should ask a friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. But like, and you know, there's simple things like when somebody messages you, you know, click on that profile and see where that takes you. Cause like in every instance, it doesn't take you to ours. It'll right. be like, it'll say garden answer and it'll have Laura's photo, but it'll be like four subscribers. You know, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know that we don't have four subscribers, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, be wary. Yeah. X and Nilda said they, uh, how awesome they will be glorious. Are you going to plant wheat this year? No. Okay. So I was going to, and then we're going to be moving stuff around so much in the cut flower garden and kind of like refining where we're planting things. And I want to build a taller strawberry bed for next year. Expanding and walking paths, expanding walking paths, making things. And it's all, it's all, yeah, going to be moving a bit except for the rose garden kind of. <laughs> Even Aaron, that I, needs to be moved. Uh, anyway, uh, so I just decided, you know what, let's just skip this year. I bought a big bag of hard red wheat to grind with our grinder just so I could experiment with that flower. So maybe I will spend this year just experimenting, like buying it somebody else's who has grown it is so much work. If we grow wheat next, or next time we grow wheat, I want to buy a mini combine. Yeah. They exist, you guys. You hook your like fabric bag and this little mini combine does like a five foot swath and it harvests your wheat. It, um, 
it um, separates the wheat berry from the stock, whatever. I can't think of words right now. <laughs> and then it winnows it, so it gets rid of all the chaff, and then it goes down into your bag. Like all the steps that I did by hand that took me forever would have been done in like 10 minutes from this one mini combine. And I would grow more, obviously. If I figured out what wheat works the best for our purposes and what I bake, you know, use it to for it to bake with. Sure. Use it to bake with. Jeez. <laughs> I'm having a hard time. Anyway, all that said, if that any of that made sense, I did not plant wheat this year. Uh, we do have it still trying to grow though, because a lot of the seeds fell into the ground and yeah, I need to start growing wheat for the chickens in the greenhouse. I need yeah. to do that. Um, Vicki Woods said, if you want to move daffodil bulbs after they bloom, what is the process? If this works, it will be beautiful. Uh, so you can do, you can move them right after they're done blooming. If you want, just keep the leaves attached. And after you plant them, wait for those leaves to yellow and die back. You can also wait till the leaves fully yellow and die back. That process is the, the process that uh, it needs to go through in order to create energy in that bulb so it'll bloom the next year. So letting the leaves stay up and yellow and die back is an important thing. So no matter when you move them, just make sure you let the leaves do that. Before it's really you too bad them. you have to wait for the yellowing. I know. I know. They're so ugly during that process. Yeah. Uh, Jeep in Hawaii said, since you have an auger named after you, is there a chance that a flower bulb in your name is in the pipeline. Also, are your tulip bulbs pre-chilled? Ours are not pre-chilled. Um, there's no flower bulb being named anything remotely close to us in the <laughs> pipeline <laughs> that I know of. Not a bad idea. <laughs> Trevor May said, when, when you were going over the daffodils, there was a tom variety that looked like a tulip. I know, I forgot to mark that in the video. Mm. There is a tom who's daffodil and a tom who's uh, uh, tulip. How does that happen? I don't know. But we actually put the tulip picture in oh. for the daffodil. I missed that. Uh, NA679 said, could you use the Sun Joe 12-amp tiller to make a trench and place the bulbs in that way? Yeah, maybe. I've seen a lot of people use Sun Joe products. I mean, they're like really inexpensive. I don't know <clears throat> how long they hold up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we had that tiller, that Mantis tiller. And um, it just like the mo something happened with the motor. Like it wouldn't stay running. Mm be nice if we if that was still working that that wouldn't get deep enough though and it's not heavy enough it just a lot of times it bounced on the ground yeah unless the soil was like kind of yeah, you kind of need it. like a heavier tiller to yeah you know to what get down. tilled soil though is not that easy to push bulbs down in and the only reason i know this is that you till up the whole orchard and then we flung all those bulbs out mm -hmm. and i only needed to get them down like two or three inches and it was still hard in some mm. spots and the problem with that too for smaller bulbs in that case is that i push them down two inches but that tiller went down eight so over time i think the reason why a lot of them didn't come up the first year is they sunk sure because that soil settled and the bulbs sunk lower than they needed or should have been um, but it's hard it's like you almost have to it loosens the soil uh, you know clearly but you always have to like move the soil out of the way you can't just pop a big bulb down yeah because it compacts too much of the soil underneath it um there's just bulb planting is the worst it's probably the worst gardening chore ever, but it's so worth it. It's so, so worth it. And I need to keep reminding myself of that because I still have like 600 to plant, maybe more than that. I don't well, know. We I picked have... up, look, look at these. You bought more? Yeah. <laughs> I, bought, I bought some more um, iris reticulata and they're beautiful. Oh, that's so funny. I got these at the garden center the other day. I was like, I'll take those. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a sickness. I know, I know. <laughs> like it you don't really even is. have time for the ones you have. You're like, I'll get more. Yeah, you know. Thankfully, we've had a nice fall. I actually was thinking maybe I should get those ewes that we have behind the greenhouse and pop those in the ground where I... You know, I have heard like uh, for a lot of plants, if you can dig a hole... Get it in the ground. Get it in the ground. Yeah. Oh, this is a good question, Aaron, for you. Uh, Ellen said, whatever happened to your weather st station setup? Did you check it after we had all that rain? Yeah. Um, you know, we get, I don't know how to compare it to others. I haven't like researched it, but um, it seems like for us, like a good rain is like uh, two tenths of an inch or. That's like a gully washer. <laughs> no, that's not a gully washer, but it's like, you know, for us, if it's like, oh, it rained all night, you know, mm -hmm. that it's like three tenths of an inch it'll mm -hmm. be like you know 0.3 inches or something like that so you know it is interesting to see and at some point once we actually get like snow and like maybe a lot of rain we'll do a video at some point and kind mm -hmm. of show 
how it works and how you can look back in history, you have to let the history kind of build up. Yeah. You almost have to let it go for like a year to where you can see how much rain you've gotten in which months and, and comparisons. All that. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, you don't really feel like you can give a good review on it yet. I like it. I'm you happy you like bought it. it. Yeah, okay. I would. I would have bought it again. Uh, Nicholas said, "Now that the USDA updated planting zones, did you increase to zone seven? Does it change anything?" Yes, they say we did increase to a zone seven. Doesn't okay. really change anything. I have a question about this yeah. that I was thinking about. Um, I don't think we're a zone seven. I don't think that we can plant zone seven uh-uh. plants and get them. So. One, I think they're lying. <laughs> but, they're wrong. <laughs> but um, two, I wonder if like zone seven means you don't get below zero or haven't for the last 10 years or whatever. Which right? is false. Wh- which us. is, I know is false. Mm-hmm. But also, does it measure how long you stay really close to zero? Mm-hmm. So like, let's say we're not getting below zero, but we have like, we have a pretty long winter, mm-hmm. you know, like four or five months, mm-hmm. four months four. Mm-hmm. of winter. Yeah. Um, so does it, does it like keep track of, you know, you're spending four months at like five degrees and it's not, you're getting down to five degrees or three degrees or two or whatever. So mm-hmm. yeah, you're not crossing zero, but you're spending a long time really close to the edge. Mm. And so I think that a lot of plants just can't take that because the frost level keeps getting lower and lower mm-hmm. as you're below 32 degrees. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I guess what I was thinking is like, I don't know if it takes that into consideration. Or moisture levels, really, because I think like dry cold, mm-hmm. it's kind of like dry heat is very different than yeah. humid heat. Dry cold is different than moist cold. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just not sold on how like everybody's a different zone. I think it will be really interesting over the next course of a couple years Mm -hmm. to see, I almost want to do it here where we get a bunch of zone seven stuff Mm -hmm. and plan it. Like here's some zone seven things Mm -hmm. and here's some zone six things and some zone five and over a couple years, see what happens. But my gut tells me that all the zone seven stuff will die, Mm -hmm. you know, and six stuff depends on where it's at. Yeah. I don't even I mean, yes. we've been turned to zone six for a few years now, too, before we're now a seven. And I never planted really based on that either because I didn't trust it. Right. Uh, Peter said, how exciting. Spring is going to be awesome. Do you water the bulbs after they've been planted, especially when you have a relatively dry climate? Uh, not really. Sometimes I do, but typically I don't. We usually have a rain, like some sort of a rain on the forecast, at least in the, the two weeks following mm-hmm. and I mean they might sit in their bags for two weeks in the back of a gator yeah or they could be in the ground waiting for that rain I, I just don't really find that it it can help settle things um, and when we did have the rain the other night I was kind of worried about the compost I thought oh man because it rained for hours and I thought it's just gonna I'll have channels running through all of that compost it will have settled and it looks great still so I'm thankful for that because um, it was only 0.2 inches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just, it rained for so long. I know. And yeah. it was just like, it was coming off the house like crazy. I could hear yeah. it on the roof and yeah. Uh, next video was a garden center Christmas tour. I went down uh, after they had closed one evening and my mom and I just walked through to show you all the Christmas stuff. And it was fun to have my mom involved on that one. Uh, Joanne said, what is the name of her mom's garden center? I would love to order seeds. Um, so it's Andrew Seed Company, andrewseed.com. And they do sell seeds on their website. And they do have some of their Christmas stuff on there as well. And I did, we linked it down below that video. Mishy said, who's in charge of watering all the plants? They have uh, like three. My sister waters them like one or two days a week. And then there's a gal named Dana who waters them like three days a week. And then I think maybe my mom does it one day a week. I can't remember. Anyway, oh, Brittany also does it sometimes. Maybe mm-hmm. my mom doesn't. I don't know. They've got it all scheduled out. Um, so there's usually you know, two or three people taking care of it. And Burgesson said, Mom's a spinner. Woohoo. What kind of sheep did she have? Do you remember? I do not remember. I don't either. There was one that was gray and black, and one that was like a really light gray. What were they? She did used to spin wool all the time. She'd have her wheel set up, and she would do that quite a lot, like when we were watching shows in the evening or just sitting around chatting she was into it for a long time and she tried to teach me I did learn a little bit I was better at the drop spindle and like yeah you know it's like an old-timey way of doing it I remember buying you like wool Wool. do you remember that you bought me yarn yarn yeah yeah no but you would buy it to where I like I have the swift and so I can make it into my own balls and all of that Uh, Megan said the real question is how many ornaments did Laura come home with I've only bought one, two, three, four, five, no. six. No. 
I bought three of the vintage garlands for our vintage tree, and I bought one nutcracker ornament, the Like Your Rocking Horse nutcracker, and I bought three of the vintage ornaments. So not that many, four ornaments and three. three <laughs> I was right, seven. And three, well, three are garlands. Uh, Wendy said, hi mom, when do you order your Christmas things for the store? How do you know how much to order? They're ordering like in the spring for Christmas stuff. Can they carry stuff over from one year? Like if they don't sell everything? Oftentimes the stuff will go on sale and some years you would have almost nothing left. Mm -hmm. And some years you'd have a small handful and you can carry that over. Sure. Um, a lot of times you'd build a theme off of like, okay, well we have some farm stuff left or country stuff left from last year. So let's order more and bolster that up and you know, we'll create a themed tree around that sure. you know, for the following year. And I think over time, you just kind of know how much to order um, based off of sales from the last few years and how much you've carried over. And um, you know, every year's a little bit different. You know, it kind of depends on what the economy is doing. Some years people are really bent on like hardcore gardening stuff and some years it's more on fluff, you know, fountains and ornaments and things like that. So, you know, things can change a bit, but you kind of get it dialed in when you've been doing it for a long time. Carolina said, where can I order that greenhouse? I love it. I think they're all sold out, <laughs> but they might be bringing in more. So you could check their website or give them a, a call or an email and they could answer that for you. Kim uh, said, random question, any updates on the 100 or was it a 200 year old Christmas cactus you repotted for an Andrews customer? I have not heard any updates. Uh, supposedly, wasn't it a 100 year old? Yeah. Something like that. Uh, Christmas cactus. I mean, I, I think I said in the video, there's no way to prove that. I can't prove that, but that's what the customer said. And it was huge and it was root bound. And we never heard anything negative. So I'm guessing that it did well sure. in the repot. BK said, where does your mother source her seeds? I'd love to hear how she started the garden center. Oh, and how she's built it to the success it is today. It was actually my dad was like the forefront of that. He started there when he was 17 and he's still like, he runs the seed side of the business, which is like a big, big side of the business. Uh, he used to do more garden. He does some, some of the garden center ordering, like the fertilizers, tools, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but my mom came in when we were young, like, kind of start school age so we started to go to school uh, and during the hours that we were at school she would work down there uh, and she's kind of developed the nursery and garden center into more of a like beautiful and full scale sort of situation so it's definitely a dynamic duo with my parents um, they both worked hard on it for a lot of years I don't know all their sources for all their seeds I did at one time well once you get in the industry like mm -hmm. once you have an established garden center people mm -hmm. come to you yeah. And they want you to sell their stuff. Yeah. So like you kind of get inundated with phone calls and right. people stopping by. Hey, I've got a catalog. Can I show you? You yeah. know, things like that. So in for terms of like packet prepackaged seeds, they carry Botanical Interest, Snake River Seed Cooperative, which is local to us, and um, Livingston seeds. And then they've got their bulk bins. And those come from a few different places. And I just cannot, on, off the top of my head, remember. Laura said, why do some of the seed drawers look like they are upside down? That means they're out of that seed and then they're waiting on a new shipment. Okay, next video is getting a start on our Christmas lights. <sighs> what I thought was gonna be like a few easy Christmas light projects turned into digging up a pipe, a conduit, having to replace. Stuff like that never goes to plan. I know, I know, and I should go in knowing that. Um, but it was like, I, I don't know, you have these positive, like hopeful <laughs> views of the day and like the kids will love it because these aren't really intense. I don't need to be up on ladders and stuff and they can be around and help. That's how you get stuff done is because you wail into every project being positive. And I think that's like a really good trait that more people need. But the, <laughs> then you have to take it. I've had to learn to take it into stride, just knowing the reality of projects you're gonna run into some snags. Yeah. At least in our projects, I oh, mean, yeah. it just happens. And you know, here I am thinking I can just pop this tree up real quick and you know, get it lit turns into a trip to Home Depot and um, digging up stuff. Another thing I'm really impressed by is when people uh, know some of the things that they might run into and have like tools on them, like they've thought through. I always feel like whenever I get into a project, I didn't bring the tools I should have brought mm -hmm. because of like the most common things you're going to run into. It's yeah. like, oh, well, you need a screwdriver for this, or I should have brought a, a wrench or a, you know, mm -hmm. a drill or, you know, whatever it is, a saw. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because there are certain projects where you just like, it's just common to run into certain issues. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm always making trips back to the barn to, 
to get one more thing that mm-hmm. I probably should have grabbed in the beginning. Yeah. I have days like that. And then you feel like you can't get anything done because all you're doing is just making trips back yes. and forth. Last week, I think it was, I had one of those where I was to the bar on a bunch. I hadn't started um, my video project yet, but I had all my camera equipment. I had been to the greenhouse already twice. I'd been to the barn like three times. I had to go out and get soil at, in the dirt land. So I'd been way out there. And then I got all set up to start my project. I forgot to put video cards in all the cameras. Ugh. And I was like, oh, I have to go back all the way back to the house to start yeah. this project. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Thank just, the Lord for gators. I know. Like, we wouldn't get anything done no. if we didn't have those. No, I'd be in better shape, but <laughs> but we wouldn't get near as much done. Anyway, uh, PJ Clip said, where do you get your white lights from? Everything we purchase seems to look yellow. We use warm white, which does have more of a yellow bent, but I don't know where you get all of them. Yeah, I mean, there's a difference between yellow and white. Yeah. But we do like warm white, yeah. which is definitely more yellow. Mm-hmm. Um, I have purchased a lot of ours from Christmas Designers dot com or mm-hmm. christmas designers i yeah i think it's christmas designers.com mm-hmm. and i don't there's nothing about that website that um makes me think like it's the best i just they have like bulk pricing mm-hmm. and um it's it's not a good deal <laughs> they're so expensive yeah um but we have had pretty good luck with them working from year to year yeah like one thing is that the lights are all sealed you can't remove them mm-hmm. and i think that's really helpful because um, if a light can pop out, then it can damage, you can get like gunk in there, or moisture, it can, moisture, mm-hmm. it can mess up the whole strand. So the fact that, cause LEDs, like there's really nothing about an LED that's going to go bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so just like seal them, you yeah. know, there's no reason to be swapping them out. Sure. Well, speaking of Christmas lights, I had to run an errand this morning and I got back and I see the lift in front of the barn. And we yeah. talked about how we weren't gonna do a lift this year for lights, just eliminate that one right. thing. We don't need to do any big tall. We can skip the barn outline, just do the doors um, and you know, skip the big trees. Well, Paul came in and he was like, so, okay, I wanna do the barn. Paul's done like everything so far this year. Um, but he, yeah, he was like, you know, getting to the top is a little sketch. He was like, I think I can do it with a rope. And I was like, Nah. Don't don't do it. Just go <laughs> yeah. rent the lift. Yeah. And... He's working on the big tree on the west side right now. Nice. Which, it, you know, I saw it and I thought, oh my goodness, like this is a simple display. It's still, it's still way simpler than last year. And I love it so much more. Yeah. The classic white lights everywhere. It's so peaceful. It's like refined and... Um, classic. Cla- like a little more tasteful maybe. Yeah. There is something fun about colored yes. lights. I think, you know... The kids, they're, I think they're a little more bummed this year. They well, still like the lights, but Benjamin has made a couple comments about how much he loves the colored lights. Um, and I like multis. I don't really like color blocks. I do in big light displays where they do it like... Yeah, the reason know. I got a bunch of single colors is because of the um, Indian Creek, the Caldwell lights. Yeah. Oh. You know, they do a really they do good a job, job and almost everything is color blocks there. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking like, man, people travel for miles to come check out this display and they do color blocks. So maybe we should do more of that. It's different in a residential setting. It might be. Yeah. I think. I don't know. Or maybe once we have like some of our stuff's more mature, maybe. I still want to next year if we can. Um, I, I called the contractor your mom is using to, you know, I was going to ask him to do a gate. And he said, yeah, we can totally put up a gate for you. But he's been busy with your mom's stuff, mm-hmm. and I don't want to pull him away from that. Don't you from dare. That. We'll have some words. <laughs> so if we can get a gate up, I'd feel a lot better about having more lights, and I'd also feel better about like scheduling a, a time where we open up the place to the public mm-hmm. and have people like directing traffic, you know, just for one or two evenings or something like that, mm-hmm. and just allow people to drive through. I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. But then, you know, when you've got your gate, it's like, well, this is the date that it's public, and then the gate shuts it off. And mm-hmm. you just can't get in otherwise. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, that'd be kind of fun. 25 Gallant said, bummer about the conduit on the brick patio, but now that you have a cord run through it, can you just leave it indefinitely? Yes. We'll leave that cord there until it stops working. And Yeah. My guess is that we will, we still need to figure out what kind of fountain we need to, because we got to get it ordered. Yeah. And right. it could be like six months after you order it. But um, probably Burke Electric, who is what we use, mm-hmm. will come and put an actual, like, wire oh, wire it. yeah mm-hmm. and and maybe even they'll have to dig it out a little bit and put it closer to the edge i'm guessing mm-hmm. um, yeah probably because we'll have something in there that's and you know what okay wire. so <clears throat> here's the other thing is that like benny's crew was the one that put that in there and i was a little bit you know mad about it but in benny's defense i just want to like 
Clearly say, here. Yeah. In his defense, he was probably expecting Burke Electric to to move it in the end because he was just getting the conduit in there. I, I do wish he would have put a two inch versus a one, but um, in terms of like not having the sweeps, he was just trying to get it in there and he knew that Burke Electric was going to come mm-hmm. and change it and get it all wired in permanently in the end. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we didn't get the fountain in there, mm-hmm. you know, in time and stuff like that. So it really wasn't so much his fault mm-hmm. except for, you know, and I, I should have been more clear about, I want, you know, this size of conduit. Cause you I, learn, I don't, though. Like, yeah, over time I'm not you sure that I to... told him. And yeah, so right. you really can't blame him or say that it was mm-hmm. his fault. Cause like, if I didn't tell him specifically what to do, yeah. He's just going to put in whatever, right? you know, and a one inch is big enough to put in a single right. line of Romex. Mm-hmm. So anyway, don't you feel like, I don't know. I feel like that was a reaction that I had to learn over time. I, I don't know. Like, um, thinking, did I phrase it right? Yeah. Did right. I teach this person right? I like trace this back. Should I actually be irritated at the person or at myself? Yeah. Like it was it a communication problem on my end. Cause a lot of times it is. Yeah. Right. A lot of times I'm like, well, I can't be mad at whoever, you know, whatever, or irritated or annoyed because I did not communicate what I needed to communicate. And you learn through the years yeah. how to do it better. Like the next time I need to do this sort of thing, I am going to teach the person to put the tulips <laughs> pointy yeah, side yeah, up you right. know like did i communicate that it's probably never planned sometimes you're before. worried about treating people like children mm-hmm. but you know i think that that's okay i think it's better to just tell people like okay i'm gonna like just what go do you know about this, this. And yeah if, and if i'm saying something you know just tell me and i'll skip mm-hmm. over you know but one time my mom brought that up that was the most impactful time that, that my mom was talking about treating your kids Mm -hmm. and when they're misbehaving like you really need to do like a self self check reflection yeah and say did i feed them good food Mm -hmm. or are they all hyped up on sugar or Mm -hmm. whatever like are they well fed are they well rested you know Mm -hmm. well rested um and you need to figure out like have you been giving them attention and love have they been on the screen too much yeah exactly all those things. things and you really need like if you get mad at them for misbehaving, but you haven't been the one that's providing them everything they need mm-hmm. for good structure, yeah. then that's on you. Yeah. And your misbehaving kids are your fault, not your kids. Because yeah. kids are kids. Yep. And they're reliant on you for what kind of food they're eating mm-hmm. and how much they're napping. And if right. it was a restful nap versus, mm-hmm. you know, well, they'll just get sleep whenever they can, mm-hmm. you know, sleeping in the car or whatever. Mm-hmm. So you have to think about those things. Yeah, that was really helpful. That, yeah. that whole line of thinking for me. And uh, it's true that most of the time it is our fault. Yeah. For yeah, the kids for sure. acting out. Mm-hmm. You yeah. can trace it back. We've got some good kids though. I mean. Oh, yeah. My, oh. Carol said your lights look so pretty. Do you have a bunch of outlets along your driveway or a lot of extension cords? Both. <laughs> Both. Yeah. And uh, you can put a lot of strands together. I asked Paul, he said he put four strands of lights per maple tree. Mm-hmm. And it was eight strands per red point. So they've done the red point maples. He and Bethany, Bethany's been helping them out when she's here. Um, and the red points look beautiful. Oh, they light up that west side. But yeah, so four on those. And I think the box said something about like 72 strands or something like that. Or That's maybe it was 90 something that mm-hmm. you could put together. Because mm-hmm. those LEDs just take up so much less power Mm -hmm. than the old incandescent style yeah so yeah that's like the biggest upgrade to me of led lights i still don't think that they look as good necessarily oh really yeah i think the old style there's something nostalgic about it because that's what i grew up with i like the old big bulbs like the big glass bulbs yeah oh but you know you can only fit like three strands together before you I run, mean, on that's what risk. the box says. Yeah. You can go more than that. but Yeah, I remember I used to try to max that out when I was doing my yeah. indoor trees. Uh, Mary said, the hook Paul is using seems to work great. Is that something homemade or can you buy that? I really love the lights this year. It looks amazing. Um, it's homemade. It's like the end of a, a pole it's pruner. It's the end of a Corona pole pruner that was junk. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever model, I don't know what it was. Uh-huh. Maybe Corona has different, you know, pole pruners It was a long now. time ago where we bought it. It was a long time yeah. ago, but I remember buying it and it... Um, it works great for lights, but uh, the way that it like telescopes, telescopes the, the in tightener. and out. Yeah. If you put any pressure on it, it's like it won't stay uh, closed or open. We probably just got a lemon. I mean. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. I'm not sure. But um, if you're doing lights, you're not really putting any pressure on right. it. So it's So did fine. you guys like duct tape a hook to the end? Yeah. From Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> Andrews had a, like a box of hooks. 
If you need was, something, you can find it at Andrews. Yeah, I was telling your mom yeah. about, you know, I need to go to the store and get the, like a certain type of a hook, like a reverse hook sort uh-huh. of. Um, and she was like, maybe we have something. And she brings out a box of hooks. Like, <laughs> who, who keeps that? Andrews. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. I, I don't know when we did projects down there and I kind of expect it to be that way here. And it is now that we've kind of like amassed little things. And like every time we do a project, we always get extras. Like I got an extra sweep when I went to Home Depot to pick it up for that conduit just so that we had one on hand. Yeah. Uh, But at Andrews, if I needed anything, I could find it. We had it. I don't keep that stuff mentally in my head. Mm. I I like to purge and get rid of all those things. Yeah. Unless it's, unless it's an item that, you know, like for drip irrigation, you know, mm-hmm. there's certain parts that you just are predictable and that you need, but I'm not the type that will save something that scrap I... Scrap lumber. Yeah. Scraps one. that I don't mm-hmm. know what I'm going to use it for in the future. That's my hardest one to get rid of. When we cleared out that cubby that the root cellar is now in. Yeah. I mean, that was like a, a scrap wood cubby. And I look at that as like gold to me. I'm like, this scrap lumber... I took lumber, it all of the dump. Yeah, you... I thought somebody took it and used it. No, I took it to the dump. Did you really? Yep. What a waste, Aaron. Because it was taking up a bunch of... Sp- we, it's, we have a finite amount of space, and yeah. I don't like living in a junkyard. Well, it wasn't a, it wasn't a junkyard, but I could have used that lumber for I something. I would clean up so many more things around here. And you know what? You have. In your defense... Yeah, I have. But in your defense, we have used some of those things. But to me, the cleanliness and the organization is way more important I, than using I agree it as long as it can be organized in a nice way or we have a spot for it then I'm good like yeah I don't want piles of stuff either I mean you guys can tell that from our landscape so we like, like piles of gates like rusty old white gates it is on a neat like. in a neat stack on a pallet takes up space oh one pallet's worth you know what here's what it is is that you are stealing someone else's joy from owning that Piece. That is a little harsh. I will put it out somewhere. You'll see, and it'll be oh, glorious. Oh, please don't. I'll have a powder coated black. How about okay. that? Okay. If it was, if it was black, but you're gonna have to have somebody come like weld it, like uh, repair it. I know it. a guy. I could weld it. Yeah, you'll spend you'll spend like twice as much having a guy come weld it versus I'll weld just. It. Oh, <laughs> okay. Andrews has one. Yeah. Uh, Paul uh, has welded stuff too. Yeah. See. He, one of you guys sent me out or brought down to Andrews. It's really cool. It's a little vase. It's like an old silver vase that has a little disc that sits on the top with holes for flowers. But then there's like three legs that are attached to it that you put tapers in. So you can do like a little flower arrangement out to the center. But one of the legs, when it got to me, had come off. And so he like, I, had, I didn't even ask him to do it. He just saw it on the counter. He's like, he just took it into the barn, fixed it and brought it in. Nice. Welded it together. Yeah, that was really nice. Okay, Cindy said, please, please solve this for me. Everything is gorgeous, but how do you keep from blowing a fuse on the strands when you plug so many strands together? LEDs. And do you have electrical outlets by each of the maples? No. If not, where is the power coming from? I would say, doesn't one whole run of maple trees run off of one outlet? Probably, yeah. So one side is off one outlet, the other side is off the other. Yeah, and we have outlets all over throughout Mm -hmm. the garden. Yeah. We did that first thing mm-hmm. before we planted anything. That was so smart. Good move, Aaron. Yeah. Pre-planning. When it's, when it's a blank space, it's not... I mean, it was expensive, but it's it's a whole lot less expensive mm-hmm. when the crew can come in and there's nothing in their way. Mm-hmm. All right. You ready for this next one? I just skimmed it. <laughs> Dark Horse said, wow, what's with your kids swinging those sticks around? That's so dangerous. Seriously, I know a guy who's blind in one eye because he and his friend were doing exactly what your kids are doing. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Yeah. That sucks for the guy that you know. I mean, that sucks. Well, accidents, but accidents happen, happen all the time. Yeah. I think that that's it. Well, I'll just move on. I'm going <laughs> to no, Kate Fisher. No, no, no. You, you need to watch the SNL skit. Um, is it You Only Live Once, YOLO? Watch that. Dark Horse needs to watch that video specifically. It's for you. <laughs> okay, I'm moving on. Kate said, I'm just wondering on the on how these fake trees hold up being outside with rain and snow. We'll see. 
<laughs> I have had other ones that are not that big, um, like little artificials that have done great. In fact, in a later video that you will have seen by the time this one comes out, I popped a couple. They are in, under protection this time around, but I've had them out exposed before. Um, they're little trees that I put in some pots that have original lights from I don't even know when. So my sister-in-law picked them up for me at a yard sale six years ago for $15 a piece, or not a piece, together, $15 for the pair. And the lights that they had on them were the original lights and they're still working right now and the trees look fine. So, I mean, time will tell, but oftentimes for Christmas decorations, it doesn't need to be like a brilliant dark green. Like you're putting this Christmas tree out, you're not really outside sitting ne next to it when it's freezing cold. It just needs to be pretty at night. And I feel like it's a really good way to utilize those older artificials. You know, I was just going, you could rehome them too. I mean, other people who could use them for sure. I just thought, oh, this would be perfect out there. I'd really, I think it'll be really nice. Rebecca said, why don't you plant a permanent Christmas tree in the circle? If I could get one that would look like a Christmas tree and stay that size, maybe. But I think so we want like some water. water feature, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's an idea. It looks really pretty right there. It wouldn't, it's not a bad idea. No. It's, they're all good ideas. Yeah. I mean, but I think water right there would be very nice because we sit there a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Kim Soprano said, it would be fun to take a horse and carriage ride down your lanes. Maybe one day we will. You know, I saw a person on Facebook that was selling a really nice Oh, carriage. I've been texted the link to that <laughs> by several people. They're like, you need this in your life. I don't have horses yet. It was so. a lot of money, though. It was like... Um, Wasn't it like 15? Yeah, like 15,000. But it was an older, beautiful, like restored... It, yeah, it looked like an antique. And it also looked yeah. like in premium shape. Yeah. It looked like a Mackinac carriage. Mm -hmm. Like one of the ones in the private barns, not the like taxi ones. She also asked, where did we get our deer? I don't know. Um... Oh, Amazon. Amazon. I think. Somebody said it looked like the Patronus. Harry Potter's oh, yeah. picture. It does. The stag. Yeah. Yeah. It, they're really pretty. They're really nice yeah. scale. Too. Uh, they also do cool white. The same. There's like a little button. Oh, And really? you can change it from warm white to cool white. Oh, fancy. Yeah. Uh, Donna said, a few summers back, you guys talked about the sand slash windstorms you get. Uh, you would get, but I didn't hear about any this past summer. Is it because much of the property has grass growing or on it now and there isn't any open patches of dirt to blow around? I mean, that's one thing. You know, when the wind blows and you've got a du dusty field, a dirt bowl right in front of you, uh, it's going to seem more severe because it's going to pick up that stuff. But we just didn't have the wind that we've had. We also, had a... the houses in the subdivision next to us mm -hmm. have been filling in more. Yeah. And I wonder if that also... Providing a break. Yeah, but it has just not been very windy. Mm-hmm. We've had a really a beautiful year. And the last video was Hartley Christmas tree, artichoke grooming and planting and finishing the tulip planting in the cut flower garden. So uh, I just popped the Hartley tree up just to see if the lights work and you guys, it's perfect. They look, they hold up to the brightness of the exterior lights on the outside. The only reason why I wanted to check is that first year we had the dirt floor in there and I put the Christmas tree in, which is now the one in the brick circle area. They have the micro dot lights. And when we turn those on, it was kind of dim. Mm -hmm. Like it was way more dim than the rest of the exterior lights. And um, that's one of the reasons that I upgraded my tree for our great room. I just wanted something that was a little bit more showy. Uh, but that is the per most perfect tree ever. I haven't decorated it yet. I'll bring you guys along for that. Uh, but it's perfect. And then we groomed the artichokes that are in the cold frames up front, which are still largely looking beautiful. I just needed to get some lower leaves removed. We potted up the ones that have been sitting in the greenhouse for a few weeks just with their root balls sitting there with their dirt root balls, uh, but looking nice, we got that done. And then I planted the last row of tulips in the cut, cut flower garden. It was a productive day, random mm -hmm. things. Um, Jackie said, the lemons look amazing. Do you think a lemon tree would survive in a house? I have tried it and you definitely can. You want a very bright spot, um, nice, bright, sunny, warm. Uh, inside I've struggled with citrus getting mealybugs or mites, spider mites. So those are two things to watch out for. We keep ours just in the greenhouse and don't move them. In fact, those citrus that I have, they were up in the front sun porch. We had such a massive mealybug problem and scale. We had mealybugs and scale at the same time. Um, and we spent so much time trying to take care of that. We ended up putting them in one of the bays of the barn because there was no plant material around them. And I mean, I just went leaf by leaf and smashed bugs and cleaned the plants off. And they still, like, and I scraped out soil put fresh soil in. I ended up giving them to Bethany 
like you can try with these, she'll try to recuperate pretty much anything. So she took them home, and I think uh, they said they got neglected and left out in the cold. Oh. That's probably what killed the bugs. Yeah. But then she was like, hey, I recuperated your lemons. I don't really want to keep them. I don't have space for them. Can I just bring them back? <laughs> sure. Do I, should I pay you for that time? That's funny. Probably. Uh, but I would love to put them in some pretty pots in there and kind mm -hmm. of create a little citrus corner. Because right now they're just in plastic pots, but they're happy. Crystal said, how do you keep the windows in the greenhouse so clean? I have them washed four times a year. I'm on the schedule with a local guy who does it. And he does a fantastic job. Um, he can bust it out quick too. He can. He's got all the right equipment. He all just, the telescoping. Yeah. You know. It takes things. him a little while, uh, but it's on. Yeah, every quarter, like every change of season, we have them cleaned. Honestly, though, they don't really ever look that dirty. No, they're not terrible. I don't even when like I knew right after Pedro and his crew were done with that rock pathway, I texted Jeff and I just asked him like, "Hey, can we get on your schedule?" He said, "You already are. <laughs> I'll come come by and get it done." I knew there would be that white powder dust, mm -hmm. but even with that, I didn't even really notice it being a huge problem. It's yeah. kind of weird. He like, does a good crazy. job. Yeah, he really does. Um, did you have to clean them after the rock walkway was installed? How do you clean the top? Jeff does all of that. Uncle said, do you still get a real tree as well or are all your Christmas trees artificial now? All of them that we have now are artificial. And oh boy, I think I still have the very first artificial tree that we ever had, which might've been in our townhouse, not the, even the first apartment. I think I, we had real really? ones. We had real ones for the first couple of years yeah. because that's how I grew up and that, that was tradition. And then I kind of was like, this is such a pain having to water your tree two to three times a day. And then it would dry, some years your tree would dry out right in the middle of the season. Artificial mm -hmm. ones allow you to decorate a little bit earlier and then you get to enjoy them the whole time. And I mean, the debate, ver you know, about environmental things and all of that, just we utilize all of our old ones outside now and, uh, or we will give them away so other people can use them. It's not like they're going to the landfill. I don't know, I kind of took that. <laughs> down the wrong probably the wrong path but anyway all of ours are artificial and I enjoy them a lot Julie said uh, Laura is it time for lemonade lemon drizzle cake lemon meringue pie or lemon chicken all of the above I'm uh, happy to see your trees loving the greenhouse Christmas decor is looking homey and peaceful by the far the best tree is the one Benjamin made for you that gave me all the feels it was so cute and it's still even with the rain the next day he didn't hadn't really thought about it because it had been several days since he had decorated it I went out and like paper chain it was like in pieces on the ground yeah. I put it back together and it's on the tree and uh, there were ornaments that had like blown because the wind blew mm -hmm. quite a lot that night um, blue ornaments down the lane and I got those all reattached so he doesn't know anything happened but it was so cute Ugh. Janice said who's cooking the turkey this year Laura I am and Aaron is so yeah. here's the menu we're doing a roasted turkey and a, and a roasted ham, two hams actually. You're doing a deep fried turkey. Mm -hmm. And then we have sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes. Well, I'm doing rolls and pull apart bread. Uh, we do chicken noodle soup <laughs> with the big thick egg noodles, which is a traditional thing. Um, we do green bean casserole. We do cranberries, jellied. It has to come out of a can and it has to hold its shape for me to enjoy it. <laughs> jellied cranberry sauce. I don't, you're not like a huge no. fan of any of it. Um, olives. And then um, pumpkin pie, pecan pie, and a chocolate pumpkin pie. Did I'm I hit it all? Ham. I'm excited for the ham and the sweet potatoes. Yeah. And the noodles, like those flavors all together. No I stuffing? Could... Oh, stuffing. That's oh. the thing I missed. That's the thing I missed on my first list, too. Oh, oh I'm going to do corn as well. <laughs> yeah. I had to borrow Andrew Seed's uh, countertop oven and my sister's countertop oven, plus our oven. Plus our, uh, like, we done. have like an RV oven in our house. Yeah. Like a family size Papa Murphy's pizza. It curls up on the sides because our yeah. oven is so little. You've seen it in videos. I need to clean it. And it makes like a horrid screeching yeah. sound <laughs> when you open it. <laughs> sometimes the light works and sometimes it doesn't. And I have to keep a pan on the bottom so it doesn't burn the bottom of my cookies. But you know what? We're just making it work until we can renovate. Yeah. It's fine. Just a couple more years. Yeah. Probably like five. I'm going to be so used to cooking in that that I'm going to probably not know how to use a fun like a functioning oven. Yeah. Uh, Barbara said, I see space under the doors. Is there a reason you don't have weather stripping under the doors to make it more tight? We will. Um, we do have, have it there, but it's just kind of like falling off a little bit after use this spring. But last year what we did is they put that weather stripping under the door and the backside door, like the north side, we put a... It's like a, like a tube thing. Mm -hmm. So there was the weather stripping and then there was that tube that went under. So nobody used that door. It did a pretty good job. So the reason that there's space under there, there shouldn't be. 
the reason that there's space is that um, the floor got put in a little bit too low. Um, how that happened, I don't really know. But um, I was wondering if we could, you know, because Hartley does like custom everything. Mm -hmm. Could we have them make us four custom doors that go down? Or the, what like, about the piece with a custom piece underneath? That, uh, reaches that won't to, work because you can't work? step up above it. Oh, I suppose you're right. You yeah. need the That'd door be a to toe go. Catcher. Yeah. yeah. So you have to make sure that it's not a, you don't have a toe catcher. So you need the door to go down farther. But like, I'll bet that they could. That would probably cost like $20,000. I'll bet you Maybe be more 30 than that. to get new doors. Yeah. I think we'll just do the whole but maybe like, sock with rice sort of we could, situation. We could tell them, hey, we'll make a video about it <laughs> and you can give us a discount. Uh, I don't think so. Shannon's It's worth a shot. <laughs> I guess you could ask. Shannon said, I would love a production greenhouse of my own. Do you use this greenhouse more than the Hartley? Yes. I use the plastic one more um, just because that's where all the dirty stuff happens, which is gardening, you know? All of the potting, seed starting um, happens in there. That one also holds more humidity, which I think for seed starting is helpful. Um, and it's just a little bit more relaxed in that space. And the Hartley, I wanted that one to be more of a beautiful, I mean, the structure is gorgeous. And I didn't want to then put in a bunch of like plastic trays and plastic pots and all those things, you know, that we're using in the greenhouse, this other greenhouse. Um, I wanted it to be all beautiful things and all the plants being in beautiful containers. And um, I like having the table and chairs in there. We need to use it more often for actual mm -hmm. eating. Um, and I would like to put a little fridge in there. It took me a while to figure out like how you use every space and what would be handy. I'd like to have a little fridge in here too, mm -hmm. like with water in there and you got to stock it though. You know That's what I would thing. like? I would like to have bathrooms that, yeah. sh Oh my gosh. If we had a bathroom, like on the back side of the barn and then one on the back side of the flower shed, that would be so handy. You know, if we, just like tore apart our our property and connected to city services we could probably do all those things you think so and it would probably be expensive yes no more expensive than the hartley doors yeah. no okay nick said no bulb tone on the fourth row of tulips not in the video because i forgot <laughs> that was an afterthought so yes they got fertilizer Katie said, where do you get the tags you use to mark your varieties in the garden? I've become a, bit, become a bit obsessed with your channel and all the seasonal changes you make. Can't wait to see those spring blooms. Those are, let me grab a packet because you can order them. I get them at my parents' garden center. They're actually a better price at my parents' garden center. So this is what they are. They're um, Luster Leaf brand, wrap -a clip large tea labels, 13 inches. Um, and there's five per pack. I really like them. I mean, in an ideal world, we'd have like beautiful metal markers that looked really pretty, uh, but these are bright. And when things grow up, you can really see these, which is very handy, very helpful. And you guys, that is it for today's recap video. I need to go get busy. We've got things to do, things to cook, and I have to get back in the pond one time to finish up our pond clean, which you might have seen that video by the time this one goes out. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, I need to get back in one time, one more pass. So that's on the list as well today. So anyway, I hope you guys are doing great. Have a great week and we will see you in the next video.